Hello everyone, my name is Dr Frankie and I'm here with Exam Tate to talk to you all about the importance of managing stress. Health looks different on everyone and I think the media has given us quite a skewed perception of what health should look like. We assume that people we see on the front of magazine covers with lean physiques or with glossy shiny hair are kind of the definition of health. And actually what's important is to think about what's going on on the inside. So to thinking about mental health, gut health, sleep quality and also the amount of stress in your life as that all contributes to your overall health. It's not just about physical health. Stress is a massively neglected pillar of health and I think particularly in today's society when we kind of congratulate each other about being busy all the time and working us all hours, stress is something that we really neglect talking about. But chronic high levels of stress over a long period of time could be negatively impacting your health. Stress can come in many forms. First of all you've got the mental and emotional stress and that's the one that we tend to think of. So things like stressing about something going on at work, financial stress, relationship worries, that kind of thing. There's also physical stresses. So things like not getting enough sleep, constantly over exercising and not giving your body enough time to recover and things like under eating or not getting the right nutrients. And then there's also the chronic daily stresses that can add to the stress in our day. Things like waking up to an alarm clock or rushing in the morning, stressing to find a parking space or rushing for a train. All of these things cause release of our stress hormones which are adrenaline and cortisol and in a short burst these hormones are absolutely fine they are designed as a kind of natural phenomenon as part of the fight or flight reaction so when we're stressed acutely this is good because it means that our heart will start beating faster to pump more blood around the body our breathing rate will increase to try and pump more oxygen to the muscles so if we are under threat we can run away the problem comes when this stress is chronic so it's over a long period of time and these hormones are being released in excess and for too long a period and that's what we call chronic stress and it can be caused by any of the things I mentioned already. If these hormones are released over a long period of time it can have really negative impacts on your health over the long term. Things like high blood pressure over a long period can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease such as heart attacks and strokes, type 2 diabetes and also negatively impact on your mental health. So how to recognise stress? Well, stress isn't actually always as obvious as you may think to recognise. Yes, you might be feeling stressed and that might be something you or someone around you notices, but stress can also present in really vague forms, which can be hard to detect. It can show itself as physical symptoms, so things like headaches, muscle tension, muscle pains, things like reduced libido, chest pains, or irritable bowel syndrome type symptoms. It can present as mental symptoms, things like difficulty concentrating, irritability, fatigue, anxiety, and also behavioural symptoms, things like feeling irritable, being more snappy, having difficulty sleeping, and making poor lifestyle choices, such as drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, or making poor food choices and picking less nutritious options. Being stressed can massively impact our food choices. We may feel more fatigued and then opt for more energy dense, high sugar foods to try and get a burst of energy and boost us up. But it can also mean that when we're stressed, everything seems like it's amounting to too much and we don't make time to exercise as well. So both of these things can lead to unwanted weight gain. Or we might be too busy or feel like we're too busy to pre-prepare our food. And then we end up opting for less nutritious, pre-prepared processed foods, which are often higher in salt higher in sugar and this over a long period can increase your risk of type 2 diabetes. So how to manage stress? I realise that it's not something you're just going to be able to fix overnight but if you can incorporate some of these habits into your daily life then the small changes will make a big difference. The first thing to do is kind of reflect on what's going on in your life and recognise that you're stressed. Some people have chronic stresses and they don't even realise it's happening. Thinking about what might be contributing to your stress and making a plan to reduce some of those things is the first step. The second is to control the controllables there might be something really stressful going on at work that you might not be able to minimise. But if you can minimise stress in other aspects of your life, such as getting up 15 minutes earlier in the morning so you're not rushing, so then you're going to work in a better, more calm state, that might help. You can also get organised and plan your time better. Things like getting your bag ready the night before can all minimise stress in the mornings. You can recognise that you're going to go through a stressful period and perhaps plan your meals in advance or batch cook food so that you're not stressed about what to cook and then you're not stressed about picking making bad options and then feeling guilty about what you've eaten. So kind of getting ahead of the game if you know you're going to have a stressful period. You can also do things like breathing exercises or using mindfulness apps to help you reduce your stress. Exercise is a brilliant way of reducing stress. We know that physical activity releases 
releases endorphins, which are happy hormones and can make everything seem less stressful and take the edge off some of those stressful situations. And then the final thing is if it all feels like too much and you feel like stress is chronic for you and it is having a negative impact on your daily life, then please seek support. You can seek support by talking about it to friends and family, but also more professional support such as Samaritan's Charity or Mind UK have great support networks on their website. If you do feel like it is negatively impacting your life, then your GP is always there to listen to you. They might not be able to take all of your stresses away, but they can give you methods of coping, refer you to support systems, give you good information, and some people may need treatment, such as antidepressant medication or referral to therapy. Things like cognitive behavioral therapy can give you coping mechanisms and ways to kind of train your mindset and your outlook on things, which can help in stress management. Stress is completely normal and all of us will experience stressful periods in our lives. But if you think it's something that could be negatively impacting your life over a long period, then please seek support. And I hope some of these tips help you. My name is Dr. Frankie. I hope you found this video useful. I will see you in the next one. Bye now.